So uh, basically, I'm uh, in August launching a new show. It's going to be called, very inventively, The Michael Brooks Show. Wow. Uh, How long yeah. did that take you to come up with? You know, ironically, it took a really long time <laughs> because first you go through like a Trying million, like, like, oh, and like, ironic. Yeah. And none of them work. Right. And then at a certain point, in like a state of exhaustion and trying to like come up with like clever inversions of like vibes cartel songs, you're just like Michael Brooks show. I, I, I can't <laughs> lie, man. I, I'm a sucker for Nation of Islam, Obama. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> the arc of history <laughs> bends towards Sharia. <laughs> Yes. yes, yes, yes. Sign me up for that, please. <laughs> what problem would you, everything you're building here right now, right? Do you want the government to tell you how to do all these things and all the regulations that you got to have your electric thing this far from this and like all <laughs> of the, the regulations like that for construction are important though. You do have to make sure that people don't do stupid shit. But, make but sure generally, you don't have a power line that's near a water line. You, 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 there's a lot of. But I would put most of that on the builders, though. They want to build things that are good. Now, I get it. I get it. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> Listen, people no, no, cut, people are cut build corners <laughs> all the time. Like You have to have regulations when it comes to construction methods they, or people are going to get fucked. They cut, regula- they cut corners when there are regulations anyway. <laughs> they do. They would cut a lot more if there weren't regulations. I'm not totally. You go to third world countries and look at construction methods. They're fucking dangerous. Yeah. That's why schools collapse on kids in foreign countries sometimes. You know, it's so silly to even, unfortunately, to have to talk about these little nonsensical things. Because I, because I, I like talking about ideas, not about people. I can't. I, I never can't, asked for more money. I can't. Now that's number one. I left. I told them. I can't believe. He must not watch the critics, right? Because if someone calls me out, rightfully so, for using some lame, tired argument, then I would be hyper aware of it, and I wouldn't use that argument anymore. But he's still doing it. He's still saying ideas. I just want to talk about ideas. What are your ideas? I want to know what his ideas are. Uh, well, I can't. That my brain is still in recovery mode from taking in so many high-level important ideas. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> you got me. I just... get this again. Come on, come on, go. I have to say that my brain is still in recovery mode from taking in so many high-level important ideas. When, when did he say that? Was that recent? Uh, that was... <laughs> high-level important ideas. It was within the last year, and it was referring to a live event he did with the, uh, Brett and Eric Weinstein. Oh, Happy. <laughs> 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 That's such an incredible concept. Nothing to worry about at all. Just relax. Just relax, Dave. Just ideas. Just ideas. Just rational just, thought. Just rational thought, just Dave. Just think rationally. Think rationally. Ooh. Mean feminist on college campuses not thinking rationally. He's sitting there in complete boredom just like, yeah, well, you know, there was Jacob Javits and there was Moderates and there was... Jesus Christ, he's a nice kid, but he's not the brightest. <laughs> and all of a sudden, wait, the angels got Hernandez. This <laughs> 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 is your opinion on Brazilian Prime Minister uh, Bolsar, uh, Bolsonaro uh, regarding... <laughs> can, you, can you just play that again? Can we just do that again? What is your opinion on Brazilian Prime Minister uh, Bolsar, uh, Bolsonaro uh, <laughs> regarding... Oops, there's a lot of things moving here. Bolsonaro. What is your opinion is doing... on Brazilian Prime Minister uh, Bolsar, uh, Bolsonaro? <laughs> he's, he's, so he's... So he, see, it's pretty good. <laughs> what the fuck is he Pat doing? Boy. <laughs> Talk about delusional. What a cuck. What a freak weirdo cuck. You know, Lula is older than him. He's a political prisoner. And you see him in those interviews. I have no Doubt Lula could out push up that motherfucker. All right, guys, it's Lula time. People ask me why I talk about this so much. I I think like why would you talk so much about I don't know Nelson Mandela when he was in prison? It's extraordinary if you reach it how flimsy the evidence is. There's no evidence he ever lived in this apartment. There's no deed in his name. There's no confirmation, and that's all they got. For those who don't know. 
Talk about Lula's presidential legacy, Michael. Why was he so popular? He lifted 40 million people out of poverty. That's the top line. 40 million Brazilians went from being in poverty to basically being somewhere in the lower middle class. One of the reasons that I do think Brasilia is so important is because it's going to reflect and parallel other situations we face. This is a very meaningful interview, and I just request that as you watch and as you listen, please spread stories about what's happening in Brazil. Because as we explained in that procedure before the United Nations, Judge Sergio Moro always had a political agenda. Do you think there was a, a U.S. role in the lawfare and political process against Lula and the Workers' Party? What I would say is that uh, by the logic of things, uh, I, I, I have the impression that, yes, there was. Right. But what's amazing about these leaks is that not only did the prosecutors, who, of course, in public were saying the evidence is overwhelming, the evidence is irrefutable, the evidence is undeniable, not only were they saying internally we think the evidence is incredibly weak. We're not even sure we have a case against him. And I'm not talking about early on. I'm talking about like three days before they indicted him. I want to tape this. We're going to send this to some people in Brazil, as all I'll say. But they, uh, we're going to do a Lula Livre, Lula final, finally Livre from the audience, please. Woo. Lula Livre, please, everybody. Lula, Lula Livre. Lula Lula Livre. Lula Livre. Lula Lula Livre. Lula Livre. Greetings from Philadelphia to Sao Paulo. Lula Libre. Michael traveled down to Brazil. I'm not sure exactly where. Where did he, where exactly where was he? I don't know. I don't know what the specific location was. And he interviewed uh, Lula. As Brendan uh, described it earlier in the, when we were in, before the show, um, this is like celebrating like this is like when your friend has a baby. Um, and uh, so congratulations to uh, Michael. As you can see in this picture, he is ecstatic. And Lula looks a little bit nervous. You quoted a writer whose name I'm forgetting from Mozambique. Uh, to Glenn Greenwald, who said, when the people are afraid, they elect monsters to protect them. And I want to know two things about this. One, I know, of course, we need a program, policy, intellectual program. But what is, are there, um, like, uh, spiritual or emotional qualities a leader needs to help take the people out of fear, have some sense of hope, and, if I may, is Bernie Sanders that kind of leader? this is Cornell West talking about the courage to love. And I don't think we should shy from these words. And I don't think we should shy from whatever way you take it the spiritual work. And I do, that's one of many reasons, obviously, that I admire Cornell West so much. Is I do think that that, I wish there was a better word, but that spiritual dimension, that I, that connection of the humility with yourself, with the real bonds of empathy, because there has to be a actual corollary with the material efforts, or it's not, it, it, it is not gonna happen. It is no one else with the sort of age and stature right now holding all of this besides Cornell West. I mean, I cannot emphasize, he is absolutely the most important public intellectual we have, and we have an abundance. So he's got to check and see what the polls say. <laughs> and he <laughs> You know what I love? So I love that he has two <laughs> modes. So when he says something like, 
Bernie Sanders is my, you know, vanilla brother. You go, okay, well, here's the soliloquy coming. And then what's awesome is that when he says, Joe Biden's a wonderful, uh, is a good man, then you know it's like, oh, oh. the soliloquy's yeah. coming. <laughs> like it's, it's the same starting point for total exaltation or complete yeah. shade. Thank you. And it's an immense honor to be here, including definitely with Dr. West, who is an influence on me. And one of the major reasons that he's an influence on me is because of that synthesis and the ability to hold multiple truths that we have to have some sense of a capacity here to do something with democracy, and then also not lie and deceive ourselves about what we are and what capitalism is and what empire is. You know, to make a long story short, we, we spoke on the phone a couple of days ago, and uh, he's going to be on the show next Tuesday. So nice. I'm super stoked. Hey. I'm super, super stoked. Dr. West, thank you so much for doing this. Brother, I'm the one who's blessed, and I want to salute you, not just for the work you do here on the radio, but your recent text against the web, dealing with some of these right-wing intellectuals, trying to keep them accountable, and you do a marvelous job, and it's just a blessing to be in conversation with you, though, brother. Indeed, okay. indeed. You, you, the, the blues, of course, is, uh, is, is tied to a kind of uh, defeatless hope. That the hope can never be crushed, but you know you're going to get pushed back and probably lose anyway, but you keep coming. I'm very happy to welcome to the program Slavoj Zizek. I have no doubt that you've heard of him. He's written. I'm more happy than you to be at your show. <laughs> I love it. A true leader is not the one who knows better than you what do you want. A true leader is the one who makes you aware of what you are able of, of your freedoms. But I love this joke. Mm -hmm. uh, three, a handful of middle-aged Jewish ladies are out for lunch. And the waiter comes in the middle of the meal and he says, is anything okay? This is my favorite right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, uh, unfortunately, I hope you had the same thing as me, or I rather don't hope in my mind that that's what we are, what, that's my attitude when I look at the news. Like, is anything, <laughs> exactly. okay? is anything good that you hear in the news, you know? You know, to me, obviously, you know, Adolf Reed, primary intellectual influence on me, incredible hero, brilliant intellectual, you know, Cornel West has meant a lot, Slavoj Zizek's meant a lot, and, uh, you know, Noam, uh, Noam means a lot. Joining us now, very, very honored and happy to have him is Professor Noam Chomsky, who has been a public intellectual, linguist, activist uh, for decades and is author of, of course, many books, including Manufacturing Consent, co-author of that book, big influence uh, on me and this show. One of the many pieces of activism that we've uh, appreciated, I've appreciated immensely that you've been involved with, was advocating for President Lula when he was a political prisoner. And 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 we were uh, honored to cover it significantly on this show and including using clips of yours explaining the situation. Trump is actually, this sounds strong, but it's true. He is the worst criminal in human history, undeniably. Well, I just want to note, first of all, you're always at a bit of a disadvantage when you're up against an accent. So I just want to have that noted in the playing field. Oh, so I support Ilan Omar. I don't buy, and, and I also, in fact, support uh, Corbyn, in fact. And the reality is, is that these things are going to become debated on the merits. And we're not going to have a false equivalency and actually drag down the profoundly serious issue of anti-Semitism by equating it with all criticism of a sovereign nation state that administers apartheid in reality. You are doing this and you're saying it in a way that that person's going to see. And the same could be applied to uh, Dave Rubin and <laughs> Sam Cedar dunking on him all the time. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. And Michael Roberts as well. It's the same Pause sort it. Of thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> Michael Roberts. Michael Roberts. <laughs> so I first uh, saw this and I that's honestly. Gotta hurt. Was that just like a knife through the chest right there? I actually honestly thought it was really funny. And I was thinking of, before we pull this tweet up, don't, don't pull it up just yet. 
But I thought that Michael Roberts would be a hilarious character. Like I could do <laughs> Joe Rogan, like like the thing of like, yes. well, like the problem with David Rubin is like he wants to talk about ideas, but like if you're gonna enter into that idea dojo, you have to be a black belt. I mean, there's a lot of I understand Frederick Douglass making a lot of the right noises, but I have a lot of concern about what it actually means when the Negro actually is in the main house, and I shouldn't be condemned for saying that. It's somehow if like Sam is calling him to whine because you could see like with Obama would just like, I think what Sam misses is that we need to build bridges in order to deal with the problem. Yeah. And then it would just be like somehow George Bush would be like, so we just uh, we just set off a brand new drone Pakistan a program in Pakistan. But I'm guessing you have a problem. <laughs> I didn't say something about a thought experiment on national television in order to encourage yahoos to harass people who own 7-Elevens. Go ahead, Sam. Bother me with your nonsense. This is I, Nelson Mandela, from <laughs> Robben Island. I'm going to need a great deal of space right now. <laughs> <laughs> the way Steve Biko spoke about me at the meeting... I don't know if we can do rebel operations in Mozambique until I have 10 months of self-care. <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard. Raisins. Actually, he was enormously well-behaved, I have to say, by his standards. Could very easily see like a, him becoming a... Why don't people vote for fucking Tulsi Gabbard? Jesus Christ, the pure, sheer human beauty. Do you remember when he got caught on tape uh, hot mic talking about how hot Melania was? Oh, I vaguely he remember. Literally, that. Oh, it was no. amazing because he literally it was like it was that. like it was like a oh my god. <laughs> 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 this pure descent of the divine goddess. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Thank you. Oh Lord. In 1971, I had a conversation with a retired beat cop, and he liked Ed Muskie and he liked uh, Franco. Actually, you know, a lot of people don't like Franco, but a lot of people admired Franco. You can think what you think one way or another. We got to ask where people are standing. And I got to tell you, this beat cop who I met in 1971, I think he died many years ago. He would not vote for Bernie Sanders. And the Democratic Party needs to ask itself, will Chris Matthews imaginary friends vote for Bernie Sanders? All right, guys. Peace and love. Lula Livre. Bernie. See you soon. What's your name? Do you want to come on? All right. This gentleman grabbed the camera and thank you. Many people know me. My name's Tom from Yakubia. Tom from Yakubia. <laughs> I do know you. Oh my God. That's awesome. That's hilarious. Bernie 2020. Bernie 2020. Medicare for all. Medicare for all. Anything else? Uh, a place for everybody to sleep. A place everybody for everybody to sleep. sleep. We're Bernie. running out of like bucket list guests. <laughs> revealing like in my yes in my weirdo version of a bucket list we've hit all of them as soon as cornell's on like lula adolf reed zizek cornell west like i don't like yeah done <laughs> <laughs> the, the bucket list interviews have been hit 